I had an individual on my YouTube channel ask me if hand these little uh, portable hand warmers could be used in place of oxygen absorbers. Well, that's a good question. These hand warmers are the same, or they work under the same principle of an oxygen absorber. They contain iron powder and secondary ingredients, and basically they heat up and they burn the oxygen around them. So just for grins and tickles, we're going to uh, test this out and see how this would work as far as freeze drying. So I got the scale up here already. Now as soon as I open this up, the instructions say that it will start to heat up almost immediately. So we'll have to separate those chemicals as quick as we can before they start burning up. Okay, so we have the weight of those is 30 grams or maybe just shy of 30 grams, looks like it dropped down to 29 grams. So we're going to take this and we're going to open this up. So we still have Well, now we're back to 30 grams, so we're going to just going to keep it 30 grams with the packaging. So we want to take this, we're going to separate all this out, so we can retrieve all the iron powder. And I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of iron powder in this. Well, I'm starting to think that these hand warmers are nothing but iron powder. Because it doesn't look like there's any secondary ingredients left behind. Very little. So we're going to try that one more time just to see what we can get. I mean you can see some little teeny flakes of something that's kind of tan colored which I'm sure is a secondary ingredient. So it looks like we have at least 28 to 29 grams of iron in these hand warmers where in the normal oxygen absorbers there were uh, other ingredients in there. So if we calculate this out we should be able to absorb about 8,400 8, cc's of oxygen. That's a lot of oxygen. But will it behave the same way as an oxygen absorber. So we're going to go ahead and do the water test and we'll, we'll see uh, how much it will suck up. And since it is supposed to be a hand warmer, we're getting 
about 101, 100 degrees or so of uh, heat coming out of this. We've started our water test. So I have the uh, 1900 cc jar that should suck up 399 cc's which is 21 percent and for the 944 cc's which will suck up 197 cc's so we'll let this go and if our calculations are correct it should replace this multiple times with the amount of iron powder that is capable of absorbing the oxygen in this case burning up the oxygen Okay, so both of the jars filled up pretty fast. This only took about two hours. So we're going to go ahead and empty the jars. <coughs> Circulate the air here. Put them back in. Circulate there on that one. So that is dump number one. This is dump number two. This is the third time we're going to empty the jar, the third, and another dump, and another dump, and another dump, and again. And another. And again. And again. And again. Okay, we're ready to dump this one again. This is smaller. But this one over here, it is getting... This one may be out of steam. So we're going to let that one sit. But I think this one over here is still going at it. We are done with the uh, hand warmers on my 1900 cc. The best this thing could make after the fact is way down here on the neck. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that. And then on the smaller 940 cc mark is also way down here on the neck. So we're going to mark it. And then we'll go ahead and calculate how much water these took up. It took about four days to do this project. We're going to remove the last of the water in here and I marked this right there with that mark so we're going to put some water in it with a lid and try to figure out how much uh, how many grams of water or cc's is going to be in this section right there. After a few attempts we got the water level exactly where we need it so now we can calculate how much water was in our very last dump. And we have 77 grams. This is the two quart jar and this is going to be its last dump. So we're going to determine how much water was in this one. Okay, we're up to that line right there. Ninety-nine grams. Just as an observation, when I took these packs out of the jars, they still, they're just a wee bit warm, which is telling me that the uh, chemical reaction is still taking place. But the levels that I ended the experiment with haven't changed for 24 hours. So I'm just guessing these are going to be spent. But we're going to go ahead and weigh these. So the weight for this one is 33 grams. The weight for this one is 31 grams. What are my takeaways and conclusions on hand warmers versus oxygen absorbers? Well, there's a few things. During my testing, 
and the testing of oxygen absorbers in general, there's an X factor of time. And it seems that regardless of uh, when I'm testing these oxygen absorbers, they will only last for so much time once exposed by oxygen. And in this case, it's for the uh, hand warmers, it's about four days. In the two quart jar, I was able to absorb uh, 3,690 cc's of oxygen. In the one quart jar, I was only able to absorb 2,047 cc's of oxygen. So there's a difference of 1,643 cc's between the large jar and the small jar. And I think that what happens is the, uh, the iron particles uh, get surrounded by iron oxide and slows down the reaction. And so there's a time factor that after the four days they have stopped working regardless of the size of the jar. So that's one issue I'm gonna have to take a look at. The other is cost. The average cost for these hand warmers are between 33 cents and 48 cents. The average cost for a 300 cc oxygen absorber is between 20 cents and 28 cents. Some companies do make larger oxygen absorbers. I've seen oxygen absorbers go up as big as 1,000 and 5,000 uh, cc's. Cost-effective wise, a hand warmer would be cost-effective, but the, the ongoing problem I have with using hand warmers is the material. The material in here is kind of porous, which I'm concerned about having some of the chemicals get into the food where the material for these oxygen absorbers are pretty much sealed. So that's the problem. I, I can't recommend using hand warmers in place of an oxygen absorber because of the material. Other than that, these would be a great idea. They're inexpensive and they can absorb a lot of oxygen. But I draw the line on the material. So take that for what it's worth. I appreciate the time you spent with me. If you would, please subscribe and go forth and freeze dry the world. So this is the SDS for the Mr. Heater hand warmer. Uh, what used to be called MSDS is now called an SDS. And if you take a look at section number two here, it has the hazard identified and they do not list any hazards in this section and that this is not classified so either there are no hazards or they're not aware of any hazards the second page here is the more interesting page in section number three these are the actual chemicals that are within the hand warmer and the chemicals shown here are basically the same chemicals they're in an oxygen absorber. We have iron powder, activated charcoal, vermiculite, water absorbing resin, which is not normally in an oxygen absorber, uh, sodium chloride, which is a salt, and water, which is also not in a normal oxygen absorber. So if you take a look at these chemicals, basically it is a big giant oxygen absorber. So you could probably use this. Now, if you take a look down there at the asterisk, Underneath the table, it says this product consists of a non-woven fabric and a heating element. Now, the only issue that might be of some concern is in an oxygen absorber, the chemicals or the components of the oxygen absorber are within a food grade material that can touch food. Uh, the material that for these uh, hand warmers is more like a, a woven fabric. And I don't know if any of these chemicals, which are basically non-hazardous in nature, could somehow transfer out of the hand warmer onto the food. If they did so, I don't think you would get sick because all of these are quite common uh, chemicals. But that's the only kind of sticking point I have is the material of the hand warmer being used as an oxygen absorber.